Um, so let me just kind of clear up some things here going forward. Um, you know, Will's going to be our quarterback. You know, we're going to we're going to go with Will. We think that's the best opportunity for our football team right now, and um, you know, see where he's at. I think Ryan um, will progress through here this week. I, I think, and and hopeful. Uh, you know, to be a backup for us and prepare as a starter, but that's where we're at right now. And shared that with the team and, you know, had a conversation with everybody involved. So um, that's what that'll look like. There'll be some moving parts along the offensive line, you know, as we work our way through the week just with health. So won't be able to give you much insight there um, moving forward. How did Ryan take the news when you had the conversation? Well, again, I just, a um, lot of respect for Ryan uh, personally and uh, professionally. You know, we've won a lot of football games here with Ryan and, and, and uh, you know, just was a professional, you know, certainly, uh, you know, disappointed. I'll keep that conversation between him and I and allow him to, to speak for himself. What was it that Will did to make you? Uh, uh, I just, you know, where we're at right now, I think just, uh, you know, just, just look, looking for something and, and it was able, you know, again, I think that there's, there's, there's clearly something there. You know, we want to be able to continue to to, to work with them and, and progress and develop and win, and, and that's how you get better. You, know, you only you only get better by going out there and playing, especially uh, you know at that position. So this will be a huge test uh, for any quarterback going on the road uh, in Tampa with what they're able to do, how well they're coached uh, schematically, but also the the players that they have, the pressure packages. Um, the disguises that they're able to have and as many turnovers as they've been able to create. In this decision, what was the balance between what gives you the best chance to win Sunday versus what's best for Will's progression as a quarterback? I, I just think of everything we're doing, we're trying to do in the best interest of the football team, and that's that's today. Um, and and then again, you know what happens in the future, I, I can't control. I'm, I'm focused on today and, and the decision. Um, you know, at that position. When you look at the way Will has performed, I mean, the, the arm talent is obvious. And, and yes, the mistakes are there, but it does not appear that the moment is too big for him. And well, how much that, of it you know, is again, now those are things that we'll continue to coach. And, um, you know, he's played two games. And, and again, and this is, um, I think some of those things are accurate, Corey, about uh, just the ability to, to, to handle the operation, and which is critical. Um, in some of those situations and, you know, as, as it relates to the disguise and getting in the right, you know, call and command and, and, and all those things. But, but you have to, at the end of the day, you got to make plays, you got to deliver the football to, to the guy that's open and, and make, you know, good, great decisions. Have you seen his teammates kind of embrace him in this role since last two weeks since he took over? Uh, I mean, I think our, our, our team is, is going to, you know, they're going to play hard for, you know, anybody that that's that's out there in any position. You know? And so, again, we got to protect the quarterback. That doesn't matter who it is. Um, you know, our ability to stay balanced and run the football, and play play better defense, uh, take care of the football, start creating some turnovers, and, and hopefully that'll lead to to wins. Mike, is it you beyond the, Mike, beyond maybe the football specific stuff, what have you seen Will do to? carry himself as a leader as a quarterback inside the building i you know that that goes for every position on this football team your ability to to know what to do to do your job uh, to help the guys that, that are out there with you or next to you whether that's uh, an offensive lineman you know that that's how you know again there's no restrictions on leadership we've said that from day one if uh if a young guy can can come in there at any position and Show that they, you know, know what to do, um, and communicate and play hard, and and help the team. Uh, then that's that's a great sign of leadership. In terms of trying to protect Will, what does the offensive line situation look like uh, in light of uh, Nick's injury? Uh, the same thing it it was five minutes ago, Terry, when I said that it'll be a work in progress throughout the week. So uh, that hasn't changed since I made that statement. But I'll keep you updated as it goes. There's, yeah.
surprised have you been with with how Will has played these these two games and, and where he is at as a, as a rookie? Mm. I, I I don't want to say surprised. I, I, Again, they missed some time, some quality time against some, you know, great opportunities to to get good practice reps in, in training camp and, and playing, you know, those games. And so, um, you know, I think the ability to be able to um, miss some of those reps, those those speed reps, you know, somewhat live reps in practice, and then uh, you know, live reps in the game you know, start the season and continue to understand what we're doing and then take advantage of his opportunity. So um, that, that's all we try to do with every every position here is, is coach every single one of them uh, and, and, and hope that uh, we get them to a point where they're ready when they get an opportunity, uh, they take advantage of it. Seeing them out there in that live action over the last couple of weeks, did you learn anything new about Levis? Mm, yeah, it's been two games, you know I mean? It's been two games, so... You know, I do think that there's, um, you know, been good, you know, good pocket presence, and and again, his ability to, um, you know, move, move the offense, and and again, we we've got to be better on third down. Our third down isn't, you know, where it needs to be, by by any stretch, and uh, you know, make sure now as we move forward against a, a really good red zone defense, uh, you know, that we're tightening things up and that we're staying efficient. Like we talked about coming out of Pittsburgh when we did have positive gains, you know, th that's going to be critical. Obviously, this wasn't where you were with Will even two months ago. What exactly has changed between then and now? What maybe have you seen from him behind the scenes or in these two games of action? And is this decision as much a function of where the team is in this season as it is Will's progression? Well, it's where we are today. You know, it's all we can focus on is where we're at today. Um, Trying to trying to get uh, back in here after a couple of days off after a you know a disappointing loss and you know that's the, the you know I think um, you know being able to evaluate him in uh, game circumstances and and you know just kind of what led to the decision one game at a time uh, mindset but how much you feel like you're kind of in a now or never. Uh, situation. I'm trying not to look too far ahead. You know, what I mean, it's a long season. We got to focus on today. We got to focus on, you know, getting back into this thing. Get get, uh, you know, get an understanding of of what and who Tampa is in all three phases, and, and everything else will, you know, take care of itself. Every game is is critical. Uh, every day is critical. I you know, can't worry about something that's you know, may or may not happen in the future. Uh, he's in in protocol. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep you updated. I you know, don't think he'll be. I wouldn't say that he'd be available uh, this week based on um, you know just where he's at right now. What about Chris Hubbard? Uh, Chris will be out there. I think you know he's got to go through some you know full practices to where then he can be evaluated after that. But he's at that stage where he can. He can practice. Encourage maybe what you saw from Kyle Phillips as he kind of tries to get, get a little bit of a groove. Yeah, I mean, it was um, you know huge there at the uh, you know end of the first half and ran some 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 nice routes and was able to get out of bounds and and be available and and not get uh, you know be able to get out into the route. Mm -hmm. So it was good. It was really good. Mike, did you feel like it was important to, to have some clarity at the quarterback position to go ahead and tell the team to where this wasn't something that lingered? I felt, yeah. I mean, again, I, I make decisions, Gentry. I don't know if they're always the, the right ones, but I'm, you know, I try to be decisive in, in the decisions that we make. Um, but I also try to, um, you know, be as honest as always with the team and just wanted to you know, just let them know so that, you know, Everybody was on the same page moving forward, and it, it took about 30 seconds, and then it was, you know, Tampa Bay preparation and, and everything that we feel like we need to do. What was that conversation with the team? Our team meeting started at okay. 10, so, so sometime okay. thereafter. Okay. And, and just to be clear, Ryan is fully healthy and able to play, correct? Um, I wouldn't say that, but 
you know, he's he's working his way back from from a high ankle sprain. When you look at your, you've had a few days to look back at your run defense, specifically against Pittsburgh. Was it, you know, setting the edge, holding your zone, or were guys just getting handled? Up well, I mean, we misfit some runs. Um, it, it's all of those, Corey. I mean, if you could ask me a specific one, I would tell you they blocked us. Uh, we didn't fit it very well. Um, we, we, we gave up an edge, right? They're, it's not just one thing, right? It's, that's where the breakdown occurs. It's where you get the double-digit runs and, um, you know, creases or, or edge. Of the, of the issues you've had, though, that, with the personnel you've got, that would appear to be one of the more correctable, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've, we're used to playing good run defense around here. Um, you know, so just, just making sure that uh, we're very conscious that, you know, just because maybe a team hadn't run it doesn't mean that they're not going to, you know, try, especially, you know, when you're in split safety defense and, you know, some scheme runs that you know, we'll have to adjust to and, and be better and, and, and fit them some – you know, you can't hand a ball off on a 10-yard line and, and walk into the end zone. I, I know that. Like, that's that, – that can't happen. You guys have found really all your success this season at home and struggled on the road a little bit. It's obviously well, we've lost four games by one score. Right. You know, I mean, we laid a turd against Cleveland. I meant point blank. And um, so go ahead. I apologize for no, interrupting. Right. Is there anything to the difficulty of playing on the road? Factoring well, just handling the road environment. You know, we, we went down there and turned the ball over in New Orleans, had as many false starts as humanly possible. I mean, we couldn't – nobody could – we ran out of guys to jump. Um, but, but I think handling the road environment is critical um, so that you're not late on a snap count. You know, I thought that had improved – you know, in Pittsburgh, didn't win the game. But again, it's you know, knowing the center and being able to mix up silent cadence uh, on third down or when we're in the gun um, so that we're coming off on the football and then and the defensive line isn't you know, creating a new line of scrimmage. Um, you know, receivers running off the football, you know, getting open quicker. Um, you know, so there, there's some things that, that you have to do on the road. You know, and then and then take care of the ball and and turn it over. You know, so again, we've been been close, and that's not anywhere near good enough. But just um, been competitive at, at at times. Anticipate having Roger and, and Sean good to go for Sunday. Uh, yeah, Sean won't practice today. I don't, you know, so we'll see where he is at the end of the week. But Roger should be good to go. Christians responded the last couple of weeks after a couple of rough games early in the season. Seems like yeah, I mean, keep battling and, and competing, and you know, it hasn't been perfect. But you know, I feel like he's really. Um, he, he again, I know the corner's first job is to is to cover the guy, uh, and, and and make sure that his man doesn't catch the ball in man coverage or match coverage, and then being able to break on the football and zone. But uh, been impressed with the way he's tackled and and replaced. I mean, it's been probably. Uh, the best from Christian that I can remember. I think he feels stronger physically. Uh, I can remember a couple in um, in Atlanta, you know, I mean, where he's you know stepping up there and replacing and and fitting and running his feet and you know pretty impressive. So um, it, it's it's a tough job playing corner in this league with, with the rules, um, you know, and so you just keep challenging and keep you know showing back up and uh, and competing. Couple more. Um, when you look at Baker Mayfield, is getting your hands up as, as important? Well, it's not that simple. You know, it's not that simple. He's had him, but he's also got great arm talent. He can throw the football uh, to all parts of the field. He is uh, he's elusive. Uh, he's got a good knack for avoiding a rush. Uh, there have been some times where he's ducked under sacks and got away. Um, you know, kind of steps up in a pocket and gives some ground and. You know, with the play action pass, it's going to be critical that, you know, that we're able to somehow affect uh, the timing of that. That's such a large part of what they do. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's had passes batted, 
but you can't just stand there at the line of scrimmage uh, ho- hoping to, to, to jump up and um, you know, bat one of the passes. I don't think that's necessarily the, the action that we want either. Coming off the Thursday night game, it's commonly referred to as the mini buy. I know you don't get a lot of extra practice out of it necessarily, but are you able to do some of the same self-scout things or reset in any way with your team, given those extra couple of days? Just trying to focus, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, we all just try to do a little reflection. And, and again, my focus is sometimes maybe um, – about what we didn't do or about what's going to happen. And so for me personally, I'm focused on you know, what I can do today to help our football team, what I can do today to coach our team, make sure that they're ready. Um, and I ask them to do the same thing. You know, let's not worry about things that could or couldn't happen. Spend too much time worrying about that. Um, but also t- take a look at what has happened and, and ask why and try to figure out you know, what it was, uh, and, and is it correctable? You know, and then at some point in time, we, we got to move on and, and we got to, you know, you know, get better today. Was there something in that that was part of your direct message to them at 10 o'clock this morning? Well, sometimes it's how I feel, you know, and I, and I think that, and again, having been in those, those seats, you know, again, I, I think for another year I'll have played longer than I've coached. Um, but sometimes the message is, is about how I feel and, and trying to figure that out, you know, and not, not how I feel, but what, 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 do, what, I, what do I need? And, and trying to translate that and, and trying to have a pulse of the football team. And, you know, we've had some guys that are here that have won football games and that, you know, that want to win and have won and are going to win. So just making sure that we're not worried about anything that's going to, you know, we're in this position, we've had a little bit of time off. Let's get back. Let's get healthy, figure out who we've got, and uh, find out how to go on the road and, and win a game. Dylan's had some struggles, but is he playing his best football for you now when given the opportunity? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Dylan's just been very uh, versatile. Uh, you know, he popped in there you know, wherever you need him, you know whether that's guard or tackle and some of that versatility. You know, he's a smart player. And, um, you know, when Dylan plays square and he plays with his feet underneath him and not off balance, it's, you know, been very effective. Is there a scenario in which you consider I, there, I, I guarantee you, yes, there could be some scenario that you guys could all come up with, not to cut you off, but I promise you we can make some scenario for whatever is about to what come about, out of here. What about you? You consider giving Skaronsky a chance on the outside at all, or is he a guy that you want to continue to develop inside no matter what? Uh, I just think that that Peter uh, can continue to focus and and be a really, really good guard for us at this point in time. But there's, I'm sure, a scenario that could come out after today that may make that a possibility. Thanks, Thanks. Appreciate maybe the, the mindset maybe coming out of I guess a mini bye with uh, with nine games to go. Just about the what this team needs to do to get back in it. Um, just got to regroup. You know, obviously uh, Thursday, uh, not doing enough. You know, and not executing enough uh, to win the game. So I think just taking those days off. You know, well needed. It's like. You could. We had a bye week two weeks ago. I want to say it was, and still you'll have injuries within each week. You know that pile itself up. So it was good, obviously, to get those those couple of days off and just regroup now and all full head on the Bucks. You know everybody's focused, locked in on that, and um, just trying to do whatever you can. You know, do your part so that we can uh, come out with a victory on Sunday. What's kind of the feeling throughout the locker room when quarterback changes made? I mean, I think that. It's something that was addressed, you know, in the team meeting of uh, Rabel that talked about it today. But it's one of those things where, at the end of the day, like, it's a team. You know, we work together. Obviously, you know, it's not an easy thing to deal with at all. I want to say um, Ryan might have got his job the exact same way that, you know, right now, you know, he's not the quarterback. So it's just one of those things where, you know, it's, it's a business. Um, it's a production business. And at the same time, like, we're all still teammates. You know, it's nothing – personal within the locker room with each other. I, I don't expect Ryan to act any different. You know, I don't expect Will to act any different. I'm not going to act any different towards either one of them. You know, it's just 
end of the day, we're just going to stick together and, and focus on trying to win football games. You've been through this before, right, in San Francisco. Was there anything from that experience that you could pull to, to this one that you're going to go through now? Yeah, I think that it's a very, very, very similar situation in that right. Um, and I honestly expect a very, very similar result as far as, you know, how the players go about it. You know, Jimmy's first-class guy, um, mentored Trey Lance, mentored the younger guys, obviously Brock Purdy as well. Um, and Ryan is the exact same way. It's the times that Ryan helps me, you know, with my own personal things I might be going through, just obviously being a leader on the, on the defense. You know, you might not make a play or come up short somewhere and, like, you know, just trying to, the mental capacity of how to get over certain certain things and, and things that you're dealing with, you know, I go to him for stuff like that. So I 1,000% expect him, you know, to react the same way that um, Jimmy G had reacted when we were in San Francisco. Talk about some of the similarities. Are there things that you've seen Will do in the locker room that – Brock did as well, and there are like specific things you can remember. Um, really, the biggest thing that I will say is just like the mindset, as far as how you approaching things. Like first day coming in, um, I remember Brock Purdy obviously Mr. Irrelevant, so different situations as far as how they made it into the league, um, but very similar mindset in the sense like every detail, trying to get all the little nuggets. You know, he's standing around trying to like learn as much as he can. So you could just sell like. Brock Purdy was like the fourth quarterback, I want to say at the time. And like his mindset, he was going to be the starter, even though he was the fourth string quarterback. This is very similar to a look at myself. Like I came into the San Francisco 49ers, I was the 10th linebacker on the depth chart. And I remember telling myself, I'm going to be a starter. I didn't know how, but you know, just that mentality, you got to prepare like a starter every single week. Um, so I think that, that type of mentality and that type of focus is similar to what I saw with Will and, you know, opportunity shows up you know you you make plays when your opportunity comes and you know you you help us win and you help us you know create positive plays and uh you know you can't you kind of can't look back from there what you say you know, i think you were the first guys to talk to him after the game on thursday when he came off after throwing the pick maybe what'd you say to him and maybe what's this team got to do to kind of support him <clears throat> moving forward i mean i think it's just obvious like when you have a young quarterback regardless of how good or, or how good or great he might be or might want to be. Um, it's just things that he hasn't seen yet. Um, and so as a defense, you know, you, it's the same way how it was in San Francisco. Like, it was no surprise. Young quarterback, the defense has to play well. Uh, special teams has to play well. Supporting cast has to do well around him. And, you know, it was just really me letting them know, like, hey, man, like, you getting us in this position to even – be able to throw a game losing interception, you know, when uh, us as a defense, we gave up a 92 yard drive, you know, when we could have easily, you know, put that fire out and won the game right then and there. So, you know, it's, it's tough. It's a tough situation to put any quarterback in, you know, backed up, having to go the distance, you know, to win the game in an environment like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, so it's just, you know, it was just one of those things, just kind of just letting them know, like, hey, tough loss, obviously, you know, grow from it, learn from it, but uh, we got to keep pushing. Given that he is a young quarterback like that, do you feel like he's earned the respect in the locker room the way he's played the last couple of games? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you definitely do. Uh, obviously, when you go out there on Sundays, the preparation, you know, you really don't know how well somebody is preparing or what they're up to. You know, you can talk to them and get a little gauge for it, see how they're doing in practice. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just, like I said, production uh, uh, production business, and you have to produce. You know, when 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 the lights come on on Sunday. So obviously, he was able to do that um, and show up. You know, for us and help our team uh, over the last two weeks. So you know, I think that's why the coaches made the decision they did, and you know, I'm sure among other things. But uh, for us as players, it's really not our job to see. Oh, why did he do this? Why did the coach decide to start this guy over that guy? Ryan is my teammate. <laughs> Will's my teammate. I'm going to treat them both the same way, whether it was the starter or the backup. So um, I'm sure that they're going to do the same. What is the run defense? What are some of the things you guys have identified that you need to be doing better? Um, just being more stout, um, just kind of staying in our gaps, not not like floating around a little bit. Um, I think just kind of like sharpening on the details, just playing sound, you know, all levels. Uh, obviously, it starts with the D-line, but – Linebackers, secondary, you know, just being in the right gaps, um, just 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 being where we're supposed to be. So. In your opinion, how much of that is matching the play calling and the scheme to what the offense is giving you versus just effort and execution? I think it's a little bit more of the details as opposed to the effort. I don't think you know you look at the effort and it's not like one of those things where you're like, man, we need to get this guy out the field. He's just lousing around. Like it's not one of those things. You know, people have effort. 
um, but it's obviously about executing and you got to uh, know the details within your job and every play requires its own, you know, or has its own details that you have to follow. So um, I think it's more so just holding in those details, reading your keys, you know, trusting your technique and just going and playing. Along those lines is, is doing your job. Is, is it when you try to do more than your job, is that when guys are getting into trouble? Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. I like, guess never like a guy, like I said, is like, you know, slouching around or not trying. It's more so like, okay, play needs to be made. Everybody wants to be the guy to make the play, myself included, you know what I'm saying? We all have those plays where you're like, oh, I know what's coming, let me try to do this. And then, you know, you put yourself out of position in a play that, yeah, you might, if you would have just stayed in your gap, it might have only been like a four yard run, but you're trying to make a tackle for loss. So now it turns into a seven or 10, 15 yard run. So it's like taking these more calculated, you know, chances as opposed to like, Everybody just kind of doing their own thing. When you look at the where you guys are at in your season, I mean, you're three and five, mm -hmm. but you've got the Bucks and then the, then the Jags. I mean, you've got an opportunity to, to thrust yourself back into it in a relatively short period of time, don't you? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's any team in the NFL, whether it's the Bucks, the Jags. 49ers, whoever, like you're playing the National Football League. So every week, anybody can get beat. Team gets put up 70 points on them and then shuts out another team three weeks later. Like, this is a week to week thing. Um, and nobody is just this top dog. This isn't Alabama and, you know, small school. Like, it's not, this isn't that. This is the best of the best on all levels. There's no level higher than the National Football League. So every week, you got to come prepared. Um, because you can't get beat and you will get beat if you think anything different. Um, and I think obviously we control our own destiny at the end of the day, and we always have. You know, one week at a time, one game at a time, you can't tell me what I'm going to do five minutes from now, let alone what's going to happen two, three, four weeks from now, you know, with all due respect, obviously. Since you guys do have to start stringing good weeks consecutively, though, don't you? I mean, yeah, so if you string together a lot of good weeks, you put yourself in position to get a lot of wins. So 100%, there's definitely a formula that comes into winning, no question. Um, and you have to put yourself in position to be able to do that. As a product of Hillsborough in Tampa, yes, how excited are you to be able to go back home and get another opportunity to play in front of your, your, your family and friends, et cetera? I'm excited for sure. I, uh, my first NFL game actually was in Tampa uh, my rookie year in San Francisco. So I haven't been back there since as far as like play a game there. So I'm excited for sure. I'm, all my family, friends, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be there. Uh, so it'll be, a, it'll be a good time. Sadly, no. <laughs> you talk a lot about your upbringing in Tampa and it wasn't easy for you. What, what's it like when you're playing in the NFL stadium in that in that city? Just And do you think about just how far you've come? I, I know, you, you did, as you mentioned, your first game was there. What was that like? And, and what's it like when you go back there and play in that stadium? Uh, it's definitely humbling because, you know, I remember taking, like I said, a city bus, living in this motel that might have been a mile and a half away from where the stadium was. So, um to be there kind of full circle moment, even from the time I was a rookie and got to play my first NFL game there. Um, you know, it's always special. Uh, it's always, just like I said, humbling and grounding because you realize how far you've come. And again, like I said earlier, it's one of those things where initially I could have never even thought that I could get that far, you know, especially with the circumstances that I was given, uh, but just believing and, and just keep fighting and keep trusting in God. And I was able to, to be where I am today. So that's kind of just how I live my life. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't really much of a reaction either way. Um, you know, we're, as receivers, we're going to run routes for whoever's throwing the ball. Um, you know, I feel like O-line is going to block for whoever. Uh, so, we, you know, we're rocking with Will going forward. That's the choice that's been made. So do everything we can to support him or whoever's going to be back there for the rest of the season. How do you like what he's done, well, like done so far? Yeah, it's been impressive. I mean, obviously that, that uh, when we were in the Oilers game, um, you know, lit it up, and even last week or this past Thursday, uh, you know, had good composure. I feel like um, was able to command the huddle pretty well, and uh, you know, he's shown that he he's ready for, to to take his his shot. Have you been able to talk to Ryan at all? Not yeah. yet. No. Does the will you've seen in games look different at all than the one you've seen in practice for these six months, or is he essentially the same guy? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's different for me because I, I really saw him in training camp mostly. Um, and once the season started, didn't get a lot of like reps with him. Um, so I've seen growth there for sure uh, from from training camp. Um, and I think too, you just see something different from anybody when it, when it kind of gets to game time compared to, to practice. So that that attention to detail and, and 
the ability for him to kind of treat it the same has been cool to see. So much goes into in like August quarterbacks and their receivers building that chemistry and having a relationship being on the same page. When you when you have a midseason change like this, is it a lot of scrambling to make sure you're on the same page and get those nuances down in a short amount of time? Um, I feel like yes and no. I feel like you kind of mitigate that with the off season training. You know, there's a lot of details that we go through, you know, with route concepts and all being on the same page, regardless of who's at quarterback, just by like, you know, TK, you know, explaining the, the intricacies of details and routes so that we're all on the same page for that. And I think there's things that we work out now, like week by week. Um, and that, that doesn't really depend on who's at quarterback. There's always something every week that there's a detail or something chemistry-wise that we're trying to lock down before that game. You guys have been stuck on 16 for a while on the road. How ready are you to, to get past that marker? Yeah. Um, very, yeah, very ready, I guess. We, we need to get one. You, uh, what has to happen? I mean, we need to score points, and we need to be – we just need to do what we, we've done on the, at home here and just find a way to tap into doing that. I think that's the key. Is it been, I mean, Coach talks about environment, handling the environment. Has that been the biggest issue? I, I wouldn't say that's really been the issue. I, I couldn't put a, a name on it, put my finger on it. Um, but I think there's something that we've tapped into at home these, these last few games um, with the offense, just having a rhythm, having a kind of a confidence that, you know, we're going to go, you know, get seven or get six in the, in the red zone. And that's what we need to carry on going going into these road games. Nick, what have you seen from Ryan in your time here as a, <coughs> as a player and as a teammate? Uh, the pro's pro uh, captain. Like, I mean, I feel like you grow up, you know, you watch all these football movies, you watch everything. Uh, you watch football growing up and you just think of like leaders and captains. That's just the type of guy he's been, kind of like your quintessential leader um but also getting to know him on a personal basis um i've learned a lot from him just the way to approach this job and to approach the locker room and you know being there for guys when you know they're, they're struggling holding guys accountable uh, every facet of leadership i've seen out of ryan um so he's been huge for me developing as a player you know my last three going on four years now Traylon, what have you maybe said to Traylon as he's kind of comes back from from what happened on Thursday night, and what what's what what was that like? Maybe seeing him uh, call it off and, and trying to support him. Yeah, I mean, just extremely grateful and blessed that you know God brought him through that. Um, that was a scary sight there. Uh, so just leaning on him, you know, trying to be a support for him. I, it feels like he. Or I've seen him a couple of times. I haven't really been able to talk to him, but. Seems to be doing all right. Um, and I think just based on what I know about him, I know he's just extremely grateful um, just to be okay. And yeah, I think it's just leaning on him and trying to help him out. But more than anything, that's just a blessing that, you know, he came out of that safely. How was Will's command of the huddle and command at the line of scrimmage? It seems different than a typical rookie quarterback. Yeah, I mean, it's impressive usually, you know, I've been here in my rookie year and had a quarterback who wasn't able to, you know, get plays out um, out of the huddle. And, you know, you see it across the league. Sometimes guys need a wristband and all that. But it's impressive to see him just be able to come in and command the, the huddle, but also be able to, you know, rattle off those plays. Sometimes you got some long play calls um, and a short cl uh, shot clock or play clock to be able to get it off. So it's impressive. It's something I don't think I'd be able to do is remember all those. <laughs> abilities change what you can do offensively so yeah I mean he's he's definitely good you know with the deep ball that showed you know when we played Atlanta and I feel like that that was huge for us to be able to throw the ball deep like that and eventually make those plays for him um, but I think we're, we go as far as we can go as a group collectively Nick you guys have been the ultimate week-to-week -week team this season how important is it to at some point string a couple of these together and do you have an opportunity now to do it on the road with these next two weeks, something you haven't done? Yeah, definitely have that opportunity. Um, something we need to do, really. At the end of the day, it's, you know, we've kind of run out of time to be able to go back and forth, and, and now it's a, getting to a point halfway through the season that we do need to string them together um, to get where we want to go.